So, I talked a lot about this last month. I'm going to go over this uh, in brief detail. I'm going to compliment a very, a very great uh, nutritionist and actually chiropractor and neurologist. Or he he that was neurologist, not technically neurologist. But Dr. Max, this slide is from his. And basically, it shows the gut lining and the bloodstream. They're right next to each other. So when you eat food, it goes through the gut up here, and it gets broken down, so it slips through into the bloodstream. They're supposed to be very close together. These are called high junction cells, and they should only let through the smallest things that go through our bloodstream. But what happens is through the, bar the bombardment, all the chemicals that are bad for our body, whether it's viruses, toxins, bacteria, and even gluten and other things that we shouldn't be eating, all the grains and refined processed foods, it overwhelms and erodes our gut lining. And over time, what's termed leaky is really that these cells start to separate and the spaces get bigger. And what happens is slowly but surely, you start to get things in our blood that shouldn't be there. And when there's basically an immune reaction in our bloodstream, the things that shouldn't be there, besides the virus and bacteria, we start eating foods, but they don't, they don't get broken down, they get in the blood, and that's when a lot of autoimmune conditions come. Because our brain tries to fight, our body tries to fight the bad guys, but starts to tag and think just food and chemicals that are natural in the body are actually foreign invaders that are the bad guys. So our immune starts to react to things we're eating. Just like if you feel nauseous or sick, if you have a big car meal or lethargic, the more these foods that erode our gut, the more these chemicals go to the bloodstream and erode our, our blood flow and our health in our blood. So again, all these pillars affect each other. But what we're going to talk more about is the fact that leaky gut also equals leaky brain. This is not talked about as much. There's a barrier between our bloodstream and our gut health. There's also another barrier very similar in our brain to separate, to not let chemicals to go into our brain. And that's what happens when we start to lose the connection in our brain, in our gut. We start to lose the barriers in our brain. Especially if you're eating things that shouldn't affect you, but you feel terrible, or you... And when you eat food, by the way, you should feel no different afterwards. You shouldn't feel excited, or lethargic, or anything like that. You should just feel full, but not too full. You're not going to get too full. But as we have more cognitive symptoms, a lot of it can be because of the problems with that barrier system. So we have to eat cleaner foods, not just for our gut health, but from our brain as well. In fact, the longest nerve in the human body is called the vagus nerve, which is one that connects our brain to our gut and our other organs. And it runs all the way down. So again, our brain and gut are highly linked together. So yes, the gut is talked a lot about in the media, it's important for our brain. It is one piece, but an important piece. So that leads to autoimmunity. The chiropractic role is that, I mentioned that inflammation can cause more inflammation in the brain. Basically, if it's familiar for anybody in here, maybe a long day at work, the more tension in our joints, it can cause more stress. It's actually been shown, this is my buddy here, some of you guys recognize him. They need to have a spine for many reasons to help house and protect our nerves. As a chiropractor, we want all the joints to move optimally. When you bend, when you twist, when you move, every vertebrae here, every bone, should separate and move because the holes between or all the nerves come out and they connect this relay system from brain to body. But when things are restricted and stiff, we have to warn them to loosen them, is to take pressure off of the nerve. And when you, what's been shown in the research in the past five years is that when, when that happens, we lose the projector and all the bones <laughs> But what happens in the spine when that loads up, which we have to press the little button here. Thank you guys for your patience. As I said earlier, I'm a much better chiropractor and neuro guy than a technology guy. So you just have to click this until it comes up. Okay, it'll move on. So basically all these studies they found that there are chemicals, inflammatory chemicals called cytokines that inflame our body and brain, and when we work on the spine and the chiropractic, it's shown to reduce cytokines in the bloodstream. So there's actually an immune reaction and a way to actually reduce some of the inflammatory reactions with getting these looser in your joints. Because the whole goal is we love the spine, but the whole goal is to take pressure off the nerves. So ideally we want to keep our spine healthy, we want to keep our diet healthy, and we want to help do these to help protect ourselves from trauma in the head. So that's where we have to be gentle and careful with sports and other activities, because a car accident or falling on your head, it does have consequences. In fact, when I see a lot of concussion patients or head injuries or car accidents in the office, the very first thing we want to do is try and get more options for the brain. The adjustments help reduce, improve blood flow, but also taking things that reduce inflammation. 
So one new supplement I recommend for everybody that's really keen Bible is omega-3 fatty acids. You guys familiar with omega-3s? Omega-3 is what actually helps reduce inflammation in the blood and in the brain. So we want a healthy spine. Now the fourth pillar of health, the fourth pillar of health, I'm leaving you guys in suspense. <laughs> Well, this actually is one that you guys may get, because this has to do with when you go to the medical doctor and they look at some of your labs, what do you guys think an important part of our health is? We talked about the blood, which relates to the heart. Any other things that we need to do for our heart? Cholesterol. Cholesterol. Very good, very good. Okay. So. Well, you guys did get it. And now we got it. Okay. Medical technology. Dancing is also good for the brain. Absolutely. There's my dancer right there. We have some very star athletes in the room today. And I love all my patients, the more active you are, the better your brain and your body. So, what I mentioned before is yes, not just cholesterol, but specifically all your lipids of the body. Don't be like this guy. <laughs> Phospholipid health. Now, we oftentimes associate cholesterol with being bad. Cholesterol is not bad, it's just something that we have in our body that we need. Cholesterol, or specifically phospholipids, which is a part of cholesterol, is actually what lines the cell membrane of all of our cells. Our muscles, our organs, and our brain tissue has some fossil lipids in them. It's a protective barrier. But when things go awry with inflammation, chronic stress, we over time get more breakdown of our cells, which actually leads to more problems with our cholesterol rising. You know when LDL concerns the bad cholesterol, right? You guys heard of LDL cholesterol? Why do you rise? Because LDL is actually what takes cholesterol and brings it to damaged cells in the body. Your HDL, the good cholesterol, is what helps bring things back to the liver for processing and repackaging. So the more problems with cholesterol, it can be due to also other factors in our overall health. So what we need to do for our cholesterol and our, our cholesterol liver health to help with Alzheimer's, specifically, is one, maintain healthy cholesterol levels. Now I mentioned earlier about another topic that it's important to keep cholesterol levels healthy because just like with blood flow, there's an association to having higher cholesterol, total and LDL cholesterol, increases Alzheimer's quite a bit. I mentioned that there was a couple of countries in the world that actually have the highest level of the gene for Alzheimer's. In those same countries, because they have very low cholesterol levels, they have lower risk than they do in America. Okay? And cholesterol has been shown up to 50% to increase the risk of Alzheimer's when they're very high levels. So again, nutrition first, natural remedies first. I always recommend that. But if it's uncontrollable, if there's some granular issues with cholesterol, and there's no way to get it down, if you try your hardest and talk to me, try your hardest, the next step sometimes is a stat or a medication because they've shown, because of the reason of cholesterol causing problems, that when they lower cholesterol, whether it's artificially or, nutri or nutritionally, it does lower the risk of Alzheimer's. And the reverse is true if it's too high. The other aspect is optimizing omega 3s. I said it earlier, omega 3 is not just a um, supplement, it's a natural fat we need in our body. Can anyone guess a source of omega 3 fatty acids? Fish. Fish. That is the most common answer I get. Specifically, fatty fish like salmon, sardines. Very good fish. But the problem is you can't eat them not stop every day, lunch, and dinner, breakfast because too much mercury and other toxins in the fish. And as time goes, it's just going to get worse with our, our pollution on water. So we need other sources. Lentils. But Lentils. Beans are good, but ideally you want more nuts, dark nuts, your almonds, your walnuts, your, all your dark nuts besides the peanut, they're all very, very good. And also your dark leafy green vegetables. Very, very good. Actually, if you improve your antioxidant level, there was a study a few years ago showing that if you have five servings a day, people who get five servings of vegetables and fruits a day, they have a much lower risk of heart disease and Alzheimer's than those who only get a couple of servings a day. So eating your nutrients, eating your omega-3s through green veggies and your antioxidants through berries and healthy fruits also help with cholesterol, which helps the brain. It's a cascade. Everything works together. And we want to decrease our omega-6s. There's a yin to the yang. Omega-6 fatty acids actually increase inflammation. Now, neither one is bad or good, it's about balance. In our society today, though, we have too many of the sixes. They're pro-inflammatory. 
That's your wheat and gluten derivatives, your corn and high fructose corn syrup, your soy derivatives, all your fast foods, your corn oil, your canola oil, your vegetable oil. All these different oils are very high in omega-6 fatty acids. It's better to be cooking with coconut, olive oil, avocado oil. These are richer in omega-3s. So we need to have a better fat ratio, a better omega-3 ratio. And then lastly, another supplement that I do think is an important thing to know is choline. Choline helps our blood vessels and lines our cells, but also choline is one of the building blocks to acetylcholine. It helps build acetylcholine in the brain, and that's what gets more degenerative with Alzheimer's, is we lose these cells, so we have to protect them. All these conditions work together. None works in isolation. So now knowing this, we have good synergy, but we also have what happens when we have different pieces of the puzzle that are not as optimal as they should be. When we have pieces of these puzzles that are not optimal, they affect other things. Inflammation, blood flow, lipid health, and free radicals all work together to help optimize all the chemicals of the brain and helps keep the cells healthy. So what we do in our office is a piece of it, but there's so many other things, and by coming tonight, hopefully you gain a lot more knowledge this one tip that you didn't know before to optimize brain health. Because frankly, you go to the doctor, every a medical doctor, they check your heart, they check your lungs, they do labs. There's not that many direct tests for healthy individuals, heart maybe healthy individuals, you know, symptoms for the brain. So we have to live preventatively before we start to have some symptoms. We have these symptoms, it means you already have damage and neurodegeneration. So by coming tonight, I really thank you all so much, and I hope you learned a lot of information. And we, I love to teach this information, so we do these talks every now and then, we're going to try to do more and more, but what I'd like you all to do, on the second to last sheet on your packet, there's, there's a list of, of, of spaces. If anyone here knows a loved one, a friend, a co-worker, anyone who can utilize this information and benefit from it, we want you to put their name down so we can invite them to the next talk. We would love to have this grow and grow to a larger and larger hall. At that same time, it's also placed in that same sheet at the bottom. If you have, we do these lectures all the time, so we do different types of lectures for business, corporations, even nursing homes and loved ones and family members and small groups. So if you know any places that you'd like us to go to or talk to, whether it's your own work, or your environment, we lecture about posture, about ergonomics, anything specific to physical health and neurological and immune health, we love to lecture anywhere. So yes, just take a moment to write any names down you're comfortable with, and we'd love to help. We never solicit any information, but we do call, and we also call patients to let them know our next lecture. So if you guys would like to uh, give any names out that would like to come to the next class, we'd like to invite you. Um, but at this point in the lecture, I want to thank you so much for coming and asking us any questions. We'd love to go over any questions you may have. And I will tell you, I know some things, but I will tell you quite honestly, if I don't know it, because I like research and you can based on research, I truly believe that the person who thinks they know everything doesn't really know anything. So, I'm happy to have you. I saw this hand up over here. Um, so, you said that choline is a building block for acetylcholine, but you didn't say how we get choline. Choline is in some food. I actually I have four bonds. I did not have a list of foods that have uh, choline, but nuts, meats, and eggs are rich in choline. But uh, we want to have healthy, free range meats and, and ideally grass fed beef. And moderately, but also that's where you would uh, also besides those 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 foods to supplement with choline. But eggs are, are a great building block, and if you're a uh, vegan, vegetarian, you don't need choline from your nuts and seeds. Um, but that's a really important nutrient that sometimes it's worth taking more of. So that's where certain supplements can also be beneficial. And I'm sorry, you also said that olive oil is better than um, uh, soy oil. There was another. Oil besides olive oil. Well, coconut oil is very good. It has a, has a higher rate, so it doesn't burn as much. And I love coconut oil. It's very, very healthy fat for the brain, actually. Well, what about peanut oil? Peanut oil, so the only reason why I said, guys, that nuts are great, but the, the worst nut of all is, is peanuts. Peanuts is not really a, a, a nut, it's not a tree nut, it's more considered a legume. Peanuts actually has, out of all the nuts, the highest amount of sugar. The lowest amount of omega 3s and the highest amount of omega 6 fatty acids. So, cooking with more peanut oil does have more 6s. And we need 6s, but the problem is, we, in our society, we have too much of that and too little of omega 3s. So, it's a balance issue. 
And uh, even flaxseed oil is really good. Flaxseed oil has a lot of omega 3s, but they also have 6s and 9s and other omegas. So that's why I really recommend using fish oil or supplements that are made from krill. I'm sorry? Sunflower Sunflower oil is just healthy, uh, but it has some omega 3s. It also has other polyunsaturated fats. Think of your, when you guys look at your nutritional facts label, it says total fats, saturated, monos, and polys. The omega family is the poly family, polyunsaturated. But there's many different types. There's not quite as many in uh, sunflower seeds, but still, it's very, very good. You can't get fat or healthy off of nuts or seeds. It'd be really hard. What about grape seed oil? Grape seed oil, actually, that's just interesting yeah. because it's still, it's good, better, better than canola and corn. My father, a few years ago, started having it in the house, but then I, I started looking into grape seed oil, uh, and I started seeing that it actually was more omega-6 dominant. <coughs> so again, it's not the worst thing in the world, but if we're trying to optimize omega-3s to reduce inflammation, we will ideally want to have lesser of the 6s and more of the 3s. You said avocado, right? Avocado. Avocado has some omega-3s, but it's also a healthy monosaturated fat. Bonds are very good too. Avocado is a great healthy fat. We actually need fat. Cholesterol is not produced by eating lots of fat. <laughs> oh, sure. How about MCT oil? Well, that actually is, is so in this share, it's wonderful. I mean, a lot of nutrition. MCT stands for medium chain triglycerides. That actually is what coconut oil is. So a lot of times they may say MCT on the label. A lot of times you can ingredients, it's actually derived from coconut oil. Especially if you're spending more money for the name. I, I really try to leave, you know, there's certain things I really am passionate about with playing supplements, but I never want to sell someone a pill. So I will always tell someone if the supplement is better or worse or if it's get cheaper somewhere. Because generally, good health can be expensive. You know, I, I, I try and eat 95% of the time well, but sometimes I do splurge a little ice cream here and there. And it's sad that the ice cream with less ingredients that's more natural, like a dollar or two more than the junkie stuff. <laughs> So real ingredients is key.